Did you, did you get the question all together? Now take a pause and read this question properly and see what they are asking. It's a very commonly asked question for the exam. And this goes for all the VHF and above navigation aids. It's relatively similar. You have an aircraft that wishes to communicate with a VDF facility that is 300 nautical miles away. So uh, let's think about it. So you have the Earth's curvature here and you have a VDF, this is question number one. We have a VDF facility here and the aircraft is somewhere here. Now talking about the range of facility, you can see the aircraft is 300 nautical miles from the VDF facility. So what range are we looking at here? Is practically the ground range from the VDF all the way to the aircraft. Now the aircraft is at a particular height. This is the altitude. And that is what is asked in the question. Now what is the height of the transmitter or, or, or height of the VDF facility? The VDF facility is situated 2500 feet above mean sea level. So it's exactly not on the ground. You see what happens if the VDF facility is on the ground you have a certain reception range. Now what happens to that if the VDF facility is now at a particular height? What happens to line of sight range? That kind of increases. Right? So you can see here that if the VDF facility was on the ground this would be the line of sight of the facility. So the aircraft as of now is not in the range. Now how can I improve, increase the range? What is the equation for maximum line of sight range in nautical miles for VHF and above? What is that? 1.23 or 1.25 Yes, transmitter in feet under root of height of fishing marine species. That's right. So you can see that I can I can climb up or I can even raise the transmitter. So in this case, the radius station is actually at a certain height from the from the ground. What is the height? Above mean sea level. Now you see what happened to the line of sight immediately. The line of sight is now has increased so much. So now the aircraft is within the line of sight. So that is the whole advantage of actually raising the height of either transmitter or the receiver. So the question pertains to the second case. We have the aircraft at a certain height and 300 nautical miles away from the um, from the station, and you are uh, and the transmitter. The VDF is basically uh, not a transmitter. It's basically 2500 feet above mean sea level. You're asked to find out what should be the minimum height of the aircraft uh, to avail reception at this particular uh, range is the question. And let's, I'll just wrap this diagram off. I just showed you to, uh, this to show you how the range can be increased by increasing height of the VDF antenna. Let's draw this particular question as such here. This is 2500 feet is where you have the VDF facility. And if I draw the line of sight for this one, so the answer as such for this question is not difficult. It's just the direct application on the formula. And what I'm trying to give you is an understanding of what is happening here. So this is the radio horizon, which is the maximum the line of sight. Now, where is the aircraft? The aircraft is at a range of 300 nautical miles. So for example, the aircraft is here, 300 nautical miles away from the station. What should be the height of the aircraft? If the aircraft is over here, it's not going to receive anything because it is below the line of sight. If the aircraft is here, it's not going to receive anything. If the aircraft is here, yes, this is the first time it's going to receive uh, something from the VDF and anywhere above that, it is in the line of sight, right? So if I look at the path of the aircraft at this particular height, this is the uh, height of the aircraft, this altitude, is basically the minimum altitude required over a range of 300 nautical miles from a VDF facility that is at a height of 2500 feet above, above mean sea level. You are asked to find out that altitude. Remember I have told you this before, it doesn't matter what the actual range of the aircraft is, 
this equation is going to yield you the maximum range which is this particular range here right and the question they asked to find the aircraft wants to communicate at a range of 300 nautical miles what should be the height 300 nautical miles it should be at the side how will you find out the height and 27600 feet now let's find out this maximum line of sight range in nautical miles for VHF and about transmission is 1.23 or 1.25 times square root of height of transmitter plus height of receiver both in feet. What is the maximum line of sight range? That is 300. And remember, you should always look at this range here. It should be in nautical max. If it is given in kilometers, you cannot apply it straight here. You have to convert to nautical max. Right? Is equal to 1.23 times. What is height of transmitter? That is 2,500. You can take. You can take. In this case, uh, the VDF facility acts as a receiver. The aircraft acts like the transmitter because we press the PTT here. So we can take this as a transmitter and this as a receiver. If a height of transmitter is what we want to find out, plus what's the height of receiver? 2500. Is the transmitter is 2500. Say again? Transmitter in one station is situated 2500. Yeah, so we can, in case of VDF, so the pilot initiates the transmission, right? For this yeah. one. So that is why you can, you can consider it that way also because he has to transmit it back anyway. So he will act like a transmitter now. So but initially, the whole idea is the pilot transmits it. So I have taken here, it doesn't matter. Whichever you take, it's gonna be the other, other one is gonna be the variable, right? So what is the, how will you solve this? Yes, uh, Peksha. How will you solve this equation, right? 1.23 root of transmitter plus, what is the root of 2500, easy? It's 50 here. Therefore, root of transmitter plus 50 is equal to 300 divided by 1.23. You can find this answer and subtract 50 from that. That is going to be root of transmitter. And then you can find the square of that. And that's going to give you the height of transmitter. How much is it? 37,598 feet or 37,600 feet. 37,600 feet. Let's look at the options here. These are the options. So which one will you, will you pick up? Charlie. Charlie. That is the one that's closest. Do you get this answer? Uh, picture 37,600. I got 190. 190. Oh, you got this as the answer. So you see, see how they have put the options? You'll end up getting one of these options if you go wrong. So be very careful. Where do you go wrong? You probably must have taken the route together or forgotten to take the route. It took like 300 divided by 1.25. So that becomes 240 minus 50 becomes 190. So under root of height of transmitter is equal to 190. She is there. Second last step. Oh, you haven't squared it. 190 is root of height of transmitter. So height of transmitter is square of that. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. When you make mistakes, they will remind you next time. So, but you see, look at the options there. It's very, very easy to kind of trick you because you have the 190 straight up there. You'll be so happy to see this. And then the happiness is what tricks you. So be very careful before you mark the options. They can trick you. So what is the answer? 37,600 feet. Now, what if I use 1.25? Exactly. Yeah, so if I use 1.25, exactly. I will get the exact same answer. So if you have any confusion, just try using 1.25 for the exam and you will get the same option. It doesn't matter, you will get relatively the same closer answer. That is the answer. Now, what is the meaning of this? Anywhere below a flight level of uh, 360 from the options or 37,600 feet. The aircraft over 300 nautical miles will not be able to receive uh, the reception from the radio. It can, it can try contacting them, but that won't reach there. But it is going another way around. Now, usually we explain it using a normal diagram. This looks complicated with all the earth curvature and stuff. So if you have the VDF station here, 
with 2500 feet of height and then you have the aircraft here at 36,100 feet and this is the line of sight range. This is the ground range. Now remember, this, the distance of the aircraft is so much as compared to the height of the aircraft that I can take this as well as this as 300 nautical miles. And you can put that up in the equation. It doesn't really matter because the height and the distance is so long. Right, so we have seen that in 160 as well, that when you have a larger distance and a smaller height, then these two sides can be taken as same. But when the aircraft travels closer and closer and reaches somewhere around here, now you see, now you cannot take these two sides as same because the angle has grown bigger. So it doesn't matter whether they have given ground range or slant range. This is called ground range or plant range. This is called slant range. It doesn't matter what they have given, it will still work.